Hi, my name is Tanya Devlin, and with me today are Morna Simeona and Dr. Hugh Lin. Today we'll be talking about a traditional healing method of relieving stress and developing yourself spiritually. This process call is called Hono Pono Pono. First of all, I'd like to find out how you got involved or developed this process. Morna? I was familiar with the old method. They call the whole punapuna, which is being practiced in Honolulu today. But uh, this is my method, because I've updated it, and uh, I did have this in other lifetimes. In other lifetimes? Before I was born in this lifetime. And uh, for me, I think we have had uh, lifetimes after lifetimes, and experiencing different lifetimes from time to time. During the process of um, coming to know or going through the process of Hono Pono Pono, um, is it learning more about ourselves mm -hmm. and discovering these past identities? Uh, the thing that we do is that we have a memory, and, and I think most of the people don't understand that there are three selves to them, to them, and they have the father, the mother, and the child. And unless the, the family are together, it is really hard to say you contact the divinity. And so the way we teach is very simple. We have a book, and uh, the students can look at the book. And the idea is that they start with themselves and end with themselves. So instead of blaming others for the problem, we blame ourselves. And the cleaner we are, the better situations may be. So it's really a method of uh, centralizing our problems mm -hmm. and eliminating that. Well, that's right. But I think the most important thing in the whole thing is the idea of uh, how do you, as a person, look at uh, divinity or God? Is he out in the boondock or is he right with you? But for us, the divinity is in your heart. So why look outside? Um, from my personal experience in looking at religion, I had learned the um, method of relying on uh, other sources mm -hmm. of healing my spiritual self. And it seems that I've uh, struggled with a lot of problems in learning that I, I can't have anybody else mm -hmm. carry that burden or learn or heal that process. Mm -hmm. But this is a method of centralizing that. Well, I, I think it's unique because instead of us having uh, another person tell us, we ask the divinity to, because he created us and uh, no one else has created us except the divinity. In this process, um, you're um, bonding with the divinity in order to understand what needs healing. Well, I think when the person knows by the technique that we teach, he is able to do it himself. And uh, is, the error is not outside, it's always within himself. And if he clears it, situations outside will clear itself. Um, Dr. Lin, could you tell us a little of the background that, and experience that you had working in the institutions? Yeah. I'm a clinical psychologist by training. And the people I work with, are, or I, I did work with for five years, were what, what we called criminally mentally ill. And these are people who have either killed or raped or murdered someone and then got adjudicated as being insane. So these are people I, I've had an opportunity to work for um, five years. And one of the things I discovered in working with them is that um, their problems really are our problems that if we are willing to look just at ourselves and really release the judgments we have of them or other people, they really get well. That, that's been my experience, just by working on ourselves. So, that, so what I do, I used to do at the institution, is uh, I did not have a therapy. I didn't have any therapy, didn't talk to anybody. That all, of that all of the work that I did, I did at home. I did between myself and the divinity, asking the divinity, what is it that I needed to do to clear myself with the patient, and then what what he felt it would be right to do with the patient. So didn't talk to them, didn't have a therapy. Mm -hmm. Just between myself and the divinity and asking what needed to be done. Um, 
does this reflect that we have a lot of judgment that um, everybody tends to thrust upon each other? Well, what happens is that the people that come into our lives are people who come into our lives so that we can let go of them, let go of whatever judgment, whether it's our children or whether it's our parents or whether it's the people that we, in quotes, work with, whether it's alcohol, alcoholics or people who have been who are mentally ill, they come into our lives because we have created some problems with them. And by our releasing the judgments and the expectations of problems with, the, with them, they get better. So it's not them, it's always us. So is it a part of, um, like what I hear from time and time again is that, um, well, history repeats itself. Uh, another thing is that spiritually, sometimes within churches, they tell us that the sins of our fathers fall upon us, yeah. or in the medical field that um, we do inherit problems of our parents. Now, how is that? Um, do you deal with that? Yeah, I mean, most of what we deal with are, are what Mona talked about, memories. And so, you know, we've had experiences of meeting people for the first time and saying to us, oh, boy, I've met her before. Mm -hmm. Or we've been to places where we say to us, I've been here before. And you have, because your, your subconscious has that memory of having met that person or, or, or being at a particular place. So if you have judgments about places and people, it's because you have had a memory of them that was hurtful. So this process is that you ask the divinity whatever error you have created that causes you to react, or, or you're asking it to be transmuted or, or released. So we really have... Um how would, you, would you describe the, the three different parts of ourselves again? Yeah, the superconscious is called the omakua and is the parental father, and the uhani is uh, the conscious mind or the processor, and the unhipili is the computer. It remembers all the way back till you were a speck of dust in the horizon. Uh, or another way to put it is that the uh, superconscious represents the spiritual part of your being. And that's that part that connects you into the divinity. So you are always connected to the divinity. There is never a moment in your creation where you're not connected. And there's another part called, what Mark called the conscious, what we call the mental, the psychologists call it. When I went to the University of Iowa, they call it conscious mind, the mental part. And then the subconscious being the physical part of our being. So who we are is spirit, mind, and body. And as, as we understand our identity and what, who we are, then we know that three of them have a specific function. For example, one of the things I, I learned at the University of Iowa that it was important to think, in our process, it's not, because the conscious mind doesn't know anything. It is a subconscious who has a much of the information that you, that you need. So what we teach people is the, the three aspects of their being, which is their self-identity, and then being, being able to deal with that relationship between the mother and the child, or the conscious and the subconscious, which is the most important relationship in all creation. That's where the problems lie. So. Um, thinking through what has gone on through the um, process of us growing as human beings, we've learned um, through the educational system and uh, the importance mm -hmm. of how we mm -hmm. develop ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have really tuned in more to the what's going on right now and mm -hmm. um, in the intelligent mm -hmm. portion of ourselves. Um, and we've left behind the development of the other two selves. Yeah. What has happened is that we, we, we no longer come as children. So we come with all of our intellect, but our intellect is not sufficient to, to really handle the problems. For example, in the area of schizophrenia, we have a lot of research on, on mental illness, but when you really look at our track record, with all the information we have, people don't get well who, who have that problem. They, uh, they, they must be managed with drugs or with, with uh, behavior mod. But the process that we're teaching, you're actually going to the cause and not having to deal with the behavior. When you erase the cause, uh, much, much of the symptoms and the effects go. So it's, um, in understanding it, it's like a child being born within each one of us as we learn this, mm -hmm. and it's developing that, mm -hmm. that child. So we've come full circle. Yeah. Um, it's actually developing a loving relationship with yourself be between the conscious and the subconscious, the mother and the child. That is the most important relationship.
that once you learn that relationship, that child will be able to do anything for you, because it's a subconscious that does everything. You know? It breathes for you, your heartbeat metabolizes. Um, looking at the the process, or the, for example, use myself mm -hmm. as an example. Mm -hmm. My father is experiencing diabetes, mm -hmm. and I have taken him from hospital to hospital and mm -hmm. doctor to doctor, mm -hmm. and I haven't really um, sat down and talked with him. Mm -hmm. um, how could I best help him? I think Mona can really tell you more about that. Well, in, in our line of work, <coughs> we feel that uh, by having the person uh, clear herself up, it would be it worked out very well. So the the problem yeah. basically is not a physical problem. The physical, the physical yeah. problem is only the symptoms or the effects. What we deal with is the cause, which are which are the in the subconscious the hurts and the pains that generate that illness. That means then instead of dealing with the with the symptoms like dieting and all that, those techniques. What we're, what the divinity says we got to go to the cause. That once we erase the the hurts and the pains so, Whatever is in the computer that causes that 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 disease, then it'll it'll lift. I, my father is diabetic, and so I've had an opportunity to, to ask the divinity what I needed to do, and uh, I have to clean up my relationship with him. And as I clean my relationship with him, my father, gets better. Um, in the process of uh, the way we've developed as a race, and considering the past with the missionary presence, and it, this happened all over the world, not mm -hmm. just in Alaska, mm -hmm. uh, or the introduction of foreign values. Do you find it difficult um, sharing some information, like with your father, if he's put into himself some of the reflections of those um, different aspects? Yeah, I, I, I don't have, fortunately, I don't have to deal with that because uh, all I do is ask, talk to the divinity. I, I don't need to talk to my father. So I it's not necessarily no, to involve him No, so directly. I ask the divinity, what is it that since I'm concerned, that means that I have a tie with my father. As I let my father go, the divinity can do his work. So it's just between me and the divinity. I, it's not between me and my father because only the divinity can release me. So if, if I talk to my father, he can't release me. I can't, oh, I yeah. so if I talk to the divinity, the divinity can release me, so that's what that's basically what we do. Just between, like Mona said, between man and the divinity is our process, not man to man. Um, in the process of looking around and searching for answers to some of the um, problems that exist today, whether it's alcoholism or suicide or depression, a lot of self-help groups have been developed. Mm -hmm. um, and. I have gone to some meetings mm -hmm. and listened just to how these groups function. Mm -hmm. uh, and perhaps I haven't paid attention, but is there a possibility that uh, someone could depend more upon the group or the dynamics of um, the friendships that develop, they develop? Mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. That's a possibility. And yet, uh, if from our side of looking at it, it is only a in memory, because uh, we don't know, we really don't know what triggered uh, the person to have uh, diabetes or to be on drugs or whatever they may be. So we're not uh, apt to be judgmental on those points. And so it, it's all right if people, people feel like that's where they need to go, I mean, if they need that kind of support. But where we're coming from is that you have to ask the fundamental question, who created you? And if God created you, then if there is a there is a flaw someplace, then it's only to go back to the Creator who can correct the flaw. So this process doesn't require you being with another person, but your willingness to be with the divinity and asking the divinity, can you tell me what errors that I committed that I can be released from? So this disease, blindness, or whatever problems you have can be, whether it's a relationship can go. It's just you and the divinity. So it really centralizes um, rather than teaches us to look to mm -hmm. other sources yeah. of healing or 
which is really neat because then you, you don't have to wait for somebody else to do their stuff. You can just begin it on yourself, you know. And I think people have a tendency to feel that they, the other person is wrong, but actually we started with ourselves and our opinions in, in looking at a situation of the other person or a plant or a thing, a machine or whatever it is. The difference with uh, our, our concept is that we work on people, on trees, on animals, on plants, sand, rocks, and whatnot. Because in every one of those are God's manifestations, and they do have the three selves. Now, you've gone back to the United Nations and spoke to them. Mm -hmm. We've given three classes at the United mm -hmm. Nations. And uh, we, di we didn't find any difficulty there because and we have Muslims and people of different denominations. But however, they were just looking at themselves which makes room for better decisions. Oh, it is mm. true. And, and you, you're, we're not, you're not interested in really changing people, whether they're, whether they're alcoholics or drug, people on drugs, or you, even your kids, like my daughter. That's, that's not my job. My job is just to work on me. I mean, I have enough stuff without my having to go look up and take care of somebody, somebody else. But the beautiful part about what we do is like in the case of my daughter, as I work on judgments I have about her, then she's free and she can go. She can follow the path that divinity has for her, not what I think, because I'm just a man, I didn't create her. He created her, and he's saying to me, just take your stuff off of her. Let her go. Set her free. So in a, in a way, we do, we can cast um, a veil of doubt mm -hmm. on them, oh, on our right. children, oh. when we, um, yes. like I say, take on yes. doubt or... Yes judgment yeah. or any of those negative yeah. one of the one of the really fundamental problems we have as human beings is that we, we that we don't realize that we don't know we, we absolutely don't know so if my if any patient comes to me or my daughter is having a problem or even I'm having I don't know what the, what the problem is so I ask the divinity who created me then he can tell me what it is and then he can tell me how I can treat that we don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's the hardest thing oh, to yeah. keep uh, yeah, remembering. Yeah. Uh, it's, would you describe the different planes or um, the theory that what might be good for uh, your daughter mm -hmm. or yourself yes. are, are totally different? Yeah. What, what happens is that, is that for example, if, if people who have drug problems or alcohol problems or people who are schizophrenic, because they're individual people and have individual blueprints, their problem of alcoholism may be very different from somebody else's problem, even though they look like they have the same problem. The, the memories and the histories are different. So since divinity knows the problems and knows their blueprint, we go back and ask the divinity, and the treatment for this person will be very different from the treatment for that person. So we don't give group treatment, because everybody has a different rhythm. And what stress is, is being out of rhythm with the divinity. So the definition for us, stress is when you're out of rhythm. So you're asking the divinity, how can I be placed back in the rhythm again? And since you created me and you can heal me. Um, not to, um, I'm trying to find a nice way to ask you. Does, because uh, a lot of people question, how does Jesus as Christ or as a teacher fit into this, or does he at all? Um, I, I tell you what is very important is Jesus is in a sense like you and I, that we are, we are creations of the divinity. So Jesus and, and, and I have the same Father. So in a sense what we're teaching is that you have the ability to go directly to the Father. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have it, it's innate in you. You were created that way. The only difference between us and, and plants and rocks is that the divinity gave us choice. So we can either do the Father's will or not. Plants and animals don't have that ability. So the only question is whether the Father and you are one, and it's your choice, you know? And I also think that uh, people misunderstood when Jesus said, Father and I are one. And he meant that the Father is within his heart, and they are one, but they felt he uh, deserved a more lordly position, but no. He just meant that every one of us, like you are holy, and the cameraman is holy, and Dr. Hulen is holy, because he has the divinity in his heart. And you even easily ask him. 
even the cameras and the chairs. They all have that. Every manifestation has that, 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 the amakua, the spiritual connection with the divinity. Because we're always connected. It's the choice that we make consciously. We think we know better and we don't ask the divinity. And we give people our opinions as to how they can heal themselves. But for me now, just for me, it's arrogance to say that we know how to heal somebody that the divinity created and we didn't create that person. Um, before we came in, we were talking a little bit about the studio or mm -hmm. anything that we we're involved with mm -hmm. and that those can hold a spirit mm -hmm. of whatever happened there before. Mm -hmm. um, the, the walls here and whatever it is and the chairs and re or the, even the camera remembers the conversation that was before. So th this is all cleaned up. And that's a part of the teaching that you share. Um, yes. The teaching is that, that it's important to free everything. So if, to come to the studio, we, we need to free the studio of whatever went on before so that you and I and Morning and everyone can be free in the moment instead of being pulled by thought forms that other people left here. So it's clean and now we're here. It's shielded. We won't get any interference from outside. And we can just enjoy ourselves, you know? Yeah. Um, my brother once told me that uh, within the native peoples here in Alaska, that when a family went to visit a family, that um, when you came in to visit, after the visit was finished, the family, visiting family would leave. Well, it was in tradition that the um, host family would go to the door, the entire family, and wave their arms and mm. um, speak to them and tell them to take the spirits mm. that you brought with you and mm. release that. Mm. Um, is that a little bit somewhat similar, similar to mm -hmm. yeah. what you're teaching? Yeah. What, what what we do is we do it before we get there and after we leave. We, we clean whatever, whatever past ties we have with the land and the building and the, and the people we're going to be. Like tonight we're going to go to a party, so we clean that up. So when we go, we don't go into any judgment. We can be free, be joyous, and then when we leave, we cut our ties again and go home. For example, um, uh, Dr. Hulin and I were working on a person, and uh, so we were outdoors. I love the trees. So while we were sitting, I mentally put a, a tent around us, over and around, and I zipped up the door. And when we were through, the branch was leaning right near the tent in this area, said, we couldn't even hear you. So I said, it's none of your business. Mm. <laughs> so this is what I think in most therapies that they do, that when you touch a person, uh, some of the uh, elements within the person, memories, would ooze out and go out into the universe. So you, the operator, are responsible for that. And uh, so we were interested in helping other people, but are we not interested in helping ourselves? So that's the gift that you bring. Yeah, and, I, I, and I've said it many times that if uh, I, I worked on myself constantly, and uh, so if the whole world was to fall apart, I still work on myself. I don't happen to be interested in another person because I may not be able to save myself. Let, let me give you an example of that. Um, when I w worked at, the, at, y, um, at Hawaii State Hospital, that one of the judgments I had was that our staff would be verbally abusive to patients. They'd call them crazy or schizoid, you know, I mean, that kind of names. And, and I had a lot of stuff about that. I thought it was wrong. And so one day I, I was watching a staff calling a, a patient crazy. And as I, my judgment was coming out, I heard this voice said, do you know that if you cleaned up your judgment that that would stop? And so as I began to work on my judgment of people having judgment about other people, as I began to work on it, a year, it took a year, but in, in our building, we don't have any more of that. I didn't have to talk to the person. All I did was work on myself. Just me, not out there. Out there is just a reflection of me. Um, in, in your travels, do you find a lot of this that is reflective in other cultures, that they strive for something like this, or is this a whole new process? Well, from, from my, my own standpoint, I don't know about Dr. Hulen, but I find that in going to other countries, they are searching and waiting for something similar to that. Uh, in Germany, they speak in German, we don't understand, but they certainly know better than we do. 
we look at the outside and they look on the inside. It's a different approach, but very same. The, the neat thing about the process that we teach is that it doesn't, it doesn't unseat anybody's religious, religious belief, cultural belief, political belief. We're not talking about any of that. We're just talking about who you are. And so my experience in Germany, um, all, all Denmark, um, across the United States, in China, Japan, where we have been, people are just interested in finding themselves. Mm -hmm. And they search, but what they don't realize is that they're already, it's already there. They don't have to go one inch about outside of themselves. So people really, as we travel around the world, are really searching for peace. But what they don't realize is peace begins here, not out there. Um. One thing that we talked about earlier, we just touched on, was um, the, through the media, the television, and how um, that acts as bringing in a lot of things into individual homes. And you mentioned that it is important to um, be careful as to what comes into your home. Would you touch on that well, real briefly? More, more I can tell you about the shield that, that we use. <laughs> okay. Um, so I have to realize that the subconscious in you is like a little child. It has no discretion. It doesn't know right from wrong. So if you're sitting in front of a TV set or if you're sitting in front of a movie, um, if you're not shielded or if you don't take care of that, all of the data will go inside of you. The computer will pick it all up. So the process that we teach is you can put a screen across the TV set. So if your children or grandchildren or you are sitting, as, as the vibration comes through the screen, it gets cleansed. So by, when the information hits you, it hits you without any of the emotion, the hurt, the pain. Yeah, and you can do that just with your mind. You don't have to say to somebody, ah, oh, I don't like that TV so program, turn it off. This one, just put the screen and let the divinity do his work of screening out the stuff. Another point of view that we can bring would be uh, the people who will be viewing it are people who actually want to or are searching for their own self-identity. They said, well, that's something new I would like to learn. That, that would be another viewpoint. Would you um, read in closing the prayer? Oh, yeah. MDI. Yeah. Um, should I say the beginning or just a prayer? Whatever you would like to share. I come forth from the void into light. I am the breath that nurtures life. I am that emptiness, that hollowness, beyond all consciousness. The I, the id, the all. I draw my bow of rainbows across the waters, the continuum of minds with matters. I am the incoming and the outgoing of breath, the indiv invisible, untouchable breeze, the undefinable atom of creation. I am the I. And to the general public who are listening, I would like to say the peace of I. May I? Peace be with you, all my peace. Peace that is I, peace that is I am. Peace for now and always, forever and evermore. My peace I leave with you. My peace I leave. Not the world's peace, but only my peace, the peace of I. I thank you very much for listening. And thank you. Thank you. And thank you very much. I'm Tony Devon.